Uh, it's uh, amazing to be here, so thank you very much. And just listening to the other talks, it's very, very interesting to see how people think about different connections and how they create them. And thanks, Catherine. I mean, I was not aware that we are working more or less in the same field. So the slight difference I do is that I hardly try to change strangers into friends. And we, maybe we talk about this a little bit later. So, I mean, uh, becoming an artist, I learned early on that art is both an individual and a shared experience. But listen now to the talks. I have a question. Is making urban connections an act of creativity or even art? When I went to the Art Academy about 30 years ago, we had a clear understanding who has a real creative mindset and who not. Either you were an artist or just a normal person. So please forgive me, we were still learning. But from my very early days on, artworks had a meaning for me. I saw them as a door opening to connections with the world around me. I began to visit museums. At least that is something everybody tells you you have to do if you want to become a professional artist. At the museum, I made a decision. I took a chair and I said to myself, you stay here until something is happening. I clearly remember the first situation. I was not aware how much time it took me. You know what happens if you are in a museum and you sit on a chair and you look at an artwork? You become very tired. Probably you fall asleep. At least I did. And I can tell you I had great times in the museum. So sometimes someone came over to me and tipped on my shoulder and said, hey young man, is everything okay with you? And I said, yeah, of course. So later I learned what happened in the museum, this zooming in and out, is called a flow. Everybody has that experience. Think about your last visit at a musical concert, the opera, or the theater, or maybe just the performance we had here on stage. What is happening? After a while, your mind is drifting away thinking about all kinds of different things. So don't blame yourself saying, oh, God, I spent so much for the tickets. That doesn't help you at all to stay awake. I tried it, and it's really, really useless. Actually, it's part of our human condition that we are only able to concentrate actively for about 20 minutes. So after that time span, something new must happen. We need different information. So I'm very glad that the TED Talk was only about 18 minutes. So back to the museum, you see me sitting on the chair, probably a little bit tired. After a while, I had seen every single detail, and there was nothing to, exp uh, to explore. I started to get bored, disappointed. I felt myself being at a dead point. But what could I do? I committed myself to stay. So I kept looking, I stared, I blinked, Suddenly, the artwork started to move and vibrate in all its dimensions. So I became a little bit nervous, but somehow this created a breakthrough moment. I wasn't tired anymore. Instead of, I felt very much energized. So this was like a breakthrough moment. It, it was there, very present, very clear, just wonderful. But this experience did not lead only to a high level of energy much more it created a fundamental different point of view towards the artwork. I took a leap of understanding which created a new reality for me. And I want to tell you one important thing I learned in the museum. Daydreaming is a gift and not a disaster. After I've made such an intensive experience, I had a question. Would I be able to recreate such a breakthrough moment with other people? And um, as I saw that time was a very important factor, I asked people to look at one single artwork for a longer period of time. I still remember the moment when I offered to a group of people to look at the following artwork for two hours. <laughs> All right? Please come to Berlin. We have that piece there. It's uh, from Barnett Newman. It was painted in 1969, has a size about 2 meters 70 by 6 meters a wonderful, amazing piece. But people looked at me and said, are you mad? 
I mean, the, these are just three colors. I can see this in three seconds. I don't mind. Why is this art? I smiled and I said, come on, let's give it a try. And after a good half an hour, we were in the middle of the process and believe me or not, explored all kinds of different things. Finally, we were all blown away by the incredible power of the color, which creates a very concentrated atmosphere. I think let's test this experience here right now. So don't be afraid. It won't take us two hours. <laughs> all right? So what I'm asking you now to do is concentrate to one of the squares, the red or the yellow one. OK? Make a decision. Put your eyes in the middle of the squares. Don't move with your eyes at the edge. Just daydream a little bit, right? Then I will count down from 10, and then I will take away the image. And let's see what is happening with the colors. So is everybody ready? Yeah. Come on, I'm in. Everybody found his field? OK. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ah, please keep on looking, keep on hands up who sees a different color emerging. Quite some, wow, this is much more than I expected. Huh? But let's do the exercise again. Let's keep go back here to this, to this image and try to look at the square, find your square, daydream a little bit into the color, and then I count down again. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And again, hands up who sees a different color merging. Oh, now we have some more people. Some more. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So what we see here is a physical reaction. We see the opposite opponent colors. So the red produce a greenish color, and the yellow produce a purple, um, yeah, a purple bluish color. It's a physical reaction. Everybody sees this in every second of his or her life. But it needs time to explore this. It's really time to learn this. Without time, you never ever create a real new experience. So working with groups, I saw how important it is to, to provide this safe frame so that we can make an experience like we had here, right now. So I discovered a specific way to run the dialogue, a friend called metaphysical stammering. Instead of coming with club, uh, sharp, clear, clear questions as an expert, I put myself into a position of a learner. I show my own insecurity, and sometimes I don't have a clue what the artwork is all about. If you show your own insecurity, people appreciate that a lot. And that creates a wonderful atmosphere right from the beginning. It creates closeness and a safe atmosphere. That's wonderful. I got some amazing results. So once I had a booked tour with school kids about 12 years, and I was standing uh, in front of that painting in a Gauguin exhibition. I'd seen that painting at least for the fifth time. By all means, I was an expert on that piece, but I didn't want to lecture. Instead, I encouraged the group to come up with their questions, with their own observations. So I was very keen to hear how they see that piece. So after a while, we had seen most of the pieces, most of the facts of the paintings, and that is usually the situation where a group might be bored. I call this the moment of quietness. And I do everything to reach that moment. It is the most important part of the whole process. So I still remember a situation so when a boy here sitting on the floor raised his hand and said, well, Anna, I want to tell you that the color of the branch of the tree and the color of the earring of the woman are very much the same. And that might have to do that this girl has a strong relation with nature. I opened my mouth and I looked at him and said, well, I mean, thank you very much. I, I didn't see that before. This observation of this little boy helped to unveil a very important aspect of the artwork. And from there, the door was open to build on that idea 
And finally, we came up with a marvelous interpretation about the relation of humans with nature. They were no art experts at all. They were just a group of 12-year-old kids. So creating this safe atmosphere where everybody can share his thoughts and emotions became my most important goal. I call this an invisible sculpture, and it became a center of my work as an artist. So with this art method dialogue, you can create connections with people which reveals very, very deep insights. That is most astonishing. That is what I was looking for. And once I was standing in front of that painting with a group of people, and I can tell you, if you want to run a hot discussion whether this is art or not, that is a perfect piece. <laughs> huh? Every time in a group of people someone says, I don't know. I mean, so my little child is able to paint this. So I thought, oh, let's prove that statement. And so we started to look at the painting. After 10 minutes, a woman became very nervous and said, I can't stand it. That is too much. That confused me. I looked at her. I never had such a strong reaction. I mean, I always saw that piece as something very playful. But something has touched her very deeply and made her feel uncomfortable. I said, all right, so let's move backwards and keep some distance. And we moved away from the painting about 10 meters. Then I asked her, is it better now? And she said, ah, now it's OK. I was not satisfied. I really wanted to understand her, where she is and how she feels. And I asked her, I mean, do you have a better overview? Is it, I mean, how is it? Tell me, let me know. I really want to understand. And she said, yes, of course. So the distance gives me some rest. So we went on with the dialogue for the next hour and a half. And we explored the very poetic aspect of Twombly's work. So the floating composition without having a real focus. It was really amazing what people found out and shared and what kind of ideas they created. Finally, we moved back to the painting again. And of course, I asked the woman if it's OK for her. Moving back, I was able to sense her tension in that very moment. So now we were sitting quite close to the painting, and we tried to exchange our ideas. So something we can summarize as a group experience. A young woman said, wow. What a fantastic piece that fits perfectly to my life situation. I can move from spot to spot and nothing determines me. That is awesome. This is really wonderful. I saw her smiling, leaning back. I smiled. That was great. But then the woman who was so nervous at the beginning said quite dramatically, but you need an aim in your life. Otherwise, you don't know where to go to. I was, I was baffled. I mean, so the tension was really back in the room. But the dialogue had, had reached a deeper level, and we started to exchange all kinds of life questions. There's not really much to say in a moment like that, so dialogue becomes a collective performance. What is happening in such a moment? So you dive into a space where everybody is exchanging his observations, ideas, thoughts, and emotions. So what I learned is that we are able to respond to each other rather than to argue. And I was keen for that process. And this is definitely the moment where I think people change from strangers into friends. It all became one, the artwork, me, the observers, just one single space. I think we have humans, we have a longing to understand each other. I saw this again and again and again working with arts as that somehow we try to come together in our understanding and to align this. So the invisible sculpture we create together with the artwork is that safe space where this understanding can happen and where we can meet as humans. So I see the work I do as a social sculpture something you can sense immediately in the moment when it emerges. So you don't have to be an artist to do this. Everybody is able to do this. So all what you have to do is, and you can do it right now, is you need an artwork, 
a bit of time and a chair, and most important, a person you can share with your questions, your thoughts, and your emotions. Thank you.